Hi, and welcome back to really the first unit of AP Psychology, and this is the second set of notes that you'll wanna make sure that you've grabbed either from your teacher or from my Teachers Pay Teacher store, which is linked below this video. So in this video, we're talking about thinking critically with psychological science and really what that looks like. We're gonna discuss the value of reliance on, those operational definitions are huge, but really the measurement in behavioral research in general. So hang tight and let's get started. We're gonna be going over a lot of different terms in this one, but this really should be a rather quick set of notes. So hindsight bias and really just being aware that it exists is really, really impactful. So this is the quote, I knew it all along phenomenon. It's where we tend to believe after learning the outcome that we would have gotten it right, that we would have foreseen it. We knew the answer to the Jeopardy question only after it was answered, right? Like, oh, they just said it. I knew that. I totally knew that. Well, that's your bias due to having hindsight. And I've always used the term or the phrase, I guess, that hindsight is 2020. And if you've never, if you've heard this before and you're like, I don't even know what that means. Well, hindsight is being able to look backward, right? Look back in time. And it's always perfect vision, 2020 vision. You always have perfect vision when you're looking back in life. And that's a bias, right? You, you, can't, you can't do that. It really is a bias. Overconfidence. This one's big. We tend to think we know more than we actually do. So how long do you think it would take you to unscramble these anagrams here? People said about 10 seconds. And on average, they took about three minutes, right? Water entry and barge, <laughs> right? Pseudoscience, this is a big one, and that pseudoscience is not really thinking critically with psych as a psychological science. So these are popular beliefs that seem to be related to science. Um, and they include all kinds of things like ESP and clairvoyance and that kind of stuff. Confirmation bias is when you look for evidence to confirm your beliefs while ignoring all other evidence that may disprove it. This could be in research. This could just be in like a disagreement, argument, or rather just friendly discussion that you're having with a group of people or friend. And this, I want you to write this down. This could be either intentional or unintentional and that you subconsciously just don't even see information or hear it or experience it um, that disproves your belief. So how do we overcome the pitfalls of things like overconfidence, hindsight bias, pseudoscience, confirmation bias, all of that. Well, that's what these notes are all about. A scientific attitude or mindset, you could say, is step number one. This attitude is composed of curiosity, right? Wanting to explore. Also, skepticism, doubting and questioning things so that you aren't just too gullible. And a bit of humility, right? Humbleness to accept when you're wrong. And really having that is going to change everything for you so that you are not just a brainwashable figure on this earth. That's pretty much it. Critical thinking does not blindly accept arguments and conclusions. You hear it and you think, hmm, you're a little skeptical about it. You are curious enough to listen in the first place, but then you're skeptical and thinking, I, I feel like I should find out more to make sure if this is correct. And really my challenge to you would be to think this way with everything, especially the news. I don't care how much you trust that news or how wonderful you think it is. I want you to challenge it and find out if it's actually true or not. It examines those assumptions, discerns hidden values, evaluates evidence, and assesses conclusions. So if you were given the statistic that, let's just say, one in every three teenagers is predicted to be less intelligent than their older counterparts at their age, that you, probably you, if you're watching this, you're probably a teenager taking AP Psychology, are projected to be dumber than people older than you. Would you accept that? And I'm hoping there's a little, like, tinge of, like, anger there. Like, what? That's, that's crap. No. But that's what that criticism is. That's what I'm challenging you to have that critical eye at every piece of information that you take in. So that's when skepticism is really crucial. 
So the scientific method, I'm hoping this is kind of a review for you, so I'll go quickly, but how do you know that something is true? And really you could go bigger than that and we'll get kind of philosophical here, what is truth? How do you know if something is close to truth? Well, psychologists, like all scientists, use that scientific method to kind of construct those theories, which in the science world, theories, although not truth, are as close to truth that scientists recognize we could ever be. So they use those theories to then organize, summarize, and simplify those observations so that other people can kind of digest and consume those. It's a very, it's very systematic, right? Very systematic so that in the end, something can be proven or disproved. Not simply, that's common sense. No, we don't say that. That's common sense. Mm, not really. How do we know that? So a theory being a really important part of the scientific method is an explanation that integrates principles, organizes and predicts behaviors or events. It's highly researched rigorously tested, right? And organize multiple studies under one umbrella of an idea, right? A theory is really just an idea that has multiple pieces of research and evidence to support it by multiple different parties or people involved. For instance, evolution. Evolution is a theory and people believe that, scientists believe that a theory is as close to truth as we will ever get simply because of human error. Hypothesis is a big part of that scientific method as well. It's a testable prediction often induced by a theory to enable us to accept, reject, or revise the theory. So a statement of a relationship between and among variables. So if this happens, then this happens statement. So research observation is huge, simply just observing. It's the application of a hypothesis, right? Research in general, through systematic observation or manipulation of variables. And here in a few different sets of notes, we're gonna talk about the very specifics of that. So that research in turn supports or disproves the theory. So we have the theory, the big thought, and we have multiple pieces of research that either support or disprove that. Now, operational definition. If you get nothing from these notes other than this, you have reached success. An operational definition is a precise definition of a variable being observed in research so that it is two things. One, measurable. Circle, highlight, star, that thing. Measurable and manageable. Manageable simply meaning you can actually do it. No one ever said that they're going to, in research, survey or experiment with three trillion people. No one ever said that because that's not manageable. Really, hundreds of thousands of people is not manageable by most institutions or groups of people. So it's got to be manageable, but then also measurable. So an operational definition is simply saying, if I want to measure happiness, if I want to measure alertness or intelligence, how am I measuring that? Because some people might say, well, you can measure happiness by how often people smile. And other people say, well, I'm gonna give them a survey. That is two different ways to measure the same variable. And that would be a botched research experiment in that case. It would not hold up in the world of science. You have to say how you're measuring the variable so that it is then replicable, so that other people can replicate that research. So you come up with operational definitions, and I want you to do this on your paper. Come up with operational definitions for these variables. So go ahead and pause and do that now. So what this does, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, when you operationally define your variables, which is absolutely necessary in research, it allows other people within your research that are collecting your evidence to replicate what you're doing. And then also allows other researchers doing similar research to replicate it as well. And that's what we've got. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that next button, this playlist, and you can see the next video. Until then.